Hi, welcome to Pasta Grammar. If you haven't met us before, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. And this is probably the worst video you could find us on because we're just going to talk about ourselves for a little while. Many of our viewers have asked us to tell the story of how we met. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tell our story and also answer some of your questions. So before we tell the story of how we met, why don't we give them some background? What was Ava like before she met Harper? From my accent, uh, the Italians, they will understand, they already understand that I'm from the south of Italy. I lived in Calabria for um, 18 years of my life. After, uh, my, after the university, after my degrees, I moved in another region of Italy, that is Umbria. And there I start to do my job uh, that it is uh, teaching Italian language to foreigners. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a teacher. Well, I grew up here in Maine uh, on a small little family farm, actually. And uh, I went to school in North Carolina and had ended up in Los Angeles by the time I met Ava where I was working as a cinematographer, so I shot movies and music videos and things like that. Now the story of how we met began when my parents went on vacation in Italy. They're really obsessed with Italy, and so they finally went there, and while they were there, they decided to take Italian language lessons. And I'll let you guess who their teacher was. <laughs> so they met Ava there in Italy and she charmed their socks off. Shortly after that, they invited Ava to come and visit them in Maine. It was around Thanksgiving and uh, I had come over to the East Coast from Los Angeles to visit them. And that's when Ava showed up. When I landed here uh, in America, uh, they invite me for dinner to their home uh, and because Harper was visiting them uh, we met uh, each other uh, the second day that I was here. That night my father, who uh, is a very smart man, uh, he suggested that I drive Ava home that night, <laughs> which I gladly took him up on. I drove Ava home and I asked her if uh, she wanted me to show her around a little bit to see what there is to do in Maine. And there's not very much to do in Maine. <laughs> that night, uh, I didn't understand his name. So I just said, okay. And he gave his telephone number to me, but I couldn't write his name. I didn't know. So I put like MMMMMM. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I know, this, is, <laughs> this was a secret until now. <laughs> so I go to pick up Ava on our first date, and I remember when I pulled up, I texted you, I said, bring a fork. And the reason I said bring a fork was because I had two slices of blueberry pie waiting in the car. And when I saw this uh, amazing guy, so handsome as every one of you can see, sitting on the truck, uh, wait with the sunglasses, waiting for me with two slices of blueberry pie. I said, okay, okay, we made, as we say in Italy, fatta la frittata. <laughs> but not because of Ima, because the blueberry pie. <laughs> it was definitely love at first bite. Absolutely, yes. So during Ava's time here in Maine, uh, we continued to see each other and got to know each other better. And it was quite fun. Uh, but sadly, I had to go back to Los Angeles. Ava had to go back to Italy. And so that was a pretty rough period, but we continued to talk. And eventually, we developed a pattern over the course of a year of her coming to America to visit me for as long of a stretch of time as her like, v you know, visitor visa or whatever would allow her to stay in the US. And then shortly after her visit, me going to Italy and visiting her for as long as I could possibly take off work. The day, the first day that I spent in LA, I went in the kitchen and I find this always amazing guy with a tank top, all the muscle, but he was eating 10, 30 in the morning a dish of pasta, cooked in a small pot. He cooked like half kilos of pasta in a small pot and uh, on the top he opened a jar, Zia Italiana, because I still remember. The, the, the tomato sauce was called Zia Italiana. 
you open this jar of prepared tomato sauce and put on the pasta. And he had also the courage to say, me, do you want some? In that moment I thought, okay, now I take all my stuff and I go back to Italy. But then, as now you know, I'm a teacher, so this spirit of teach something to someone else came out and I said, this can be a good challenge, but I can, I can do this. And by teaching, she means endlessly criticizing the way I ate, and it was driving me crazy. She just kept telling me and kept telling me like, why don't you make the sauce from scratch? This could be so good. Like, why don't you make it this way? Why don't you make it this way? And I was like, leave me alone. I'm just, let me eat what I want to eat. Like, come on. And I kept having the same arguments. I was like, well, this is so much simpler. It's more convenient. It's cheaper. Etc. 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 And then one day, I finally conceded, and I let her show me how to make my own sauce and how to properly cook the pasta. I took one bite, and it was just—it was just a life-changing moment. Because not only was her sauce so simple to make that it really didn't take any more time than heating up the jar of sauce, but it actually—it was also cheaper too. So that argument was out the window. <laughs> Uh, and it was so absolutely delicious. And it was just like, okay, maybe, maybe she knows what she's talking about. Maybe there's something to this. And so that was the moment when Ava first brought flavor into my life. When Ava and I first met, she quickly learned that I am a really big ancient history buff. So when I would go and visit her in Italy, uh, the trips usually involved uh, her wanting to show me all this amazing food, which she certainly did, but uh, a lot of the trip was me dragging her around from place to place just to visit like ancient historical sites. One of the most memorable moments was when she somehow pulled some strings, I don't know how, and got uh, this tomb, the tomb of the Scipios in Rome, open for me, just for me to explore, privately, there was no one else there, it wasn't open to the public at the time, and I just got to go in and explore to my heart's content uh, while she waited outside. So after about a year of going back and forth and back and forth between Italy and California, we realized that we just really couldn't afford to keep doing that anymore. So it kind of came down to a decision. We either had to break up or get married. And we actually tried to break up. Uh, we tried, we gave it a good, healthy shot, um, but it, it, it just didn't last. Yes, like for uh, half day, <laughs> no more half day. It wasn't the, uh, the most romantic proposal ever because uh, she was in Italy at the time and I was here and it happened over WhatsApp and it was mostly us having a conversation and just realizing like, okay, we just, we have to just do this and get married. So we decided that uh, we got married in, uh, in Italy, we got married in Calabria where uh, I'm from. The wedding was really beautiful, it was on the beach at sunset, we kept it pretty small, it was mostly immediate family. After the honeymoon, uh, there was sort of a period of like, oh crap, we're married now and we still don't really have a plan for where we're gonna end up or what we're gonna do. Uh, we, we were pretty sure that Ava was gonna come to the US and come to Los Angeles, but there was also some talk of me moving to Italy and we still hadn't really figured it out. We had gotten as far as we're gonna get married and then everything after that was a little bit fuzzy. Around this time, I was already sort of contemplating uh, leaving LA for a little bit and uh, kind of needing a change of pace. And I ended up having a work opportunity back here in Maine uh, where I grew up. And so this past winter, I decided to come here to Maine and Ava uh, decided to come to visit. And the plan was for her to come for a few months and then return in the fall or the summer, um, which is when we were thinking about starting the green card process. So Ava came here and uh, we spent a few months together and she was getting ready to go back and that's when COVID happened. What we didn't decide at that moment, COVID decided for, for us, because I couldn't go back. My flight was cancelled, as everyone already know now. So we decided our, our hand is pretty much forced. Uh, Ava can't go back anyway, and we decided, well, we might as well just get the green card process started. So I had to kind of lawyer up and learn how to fill out all of the 
the many many pieces of paperwork that are needed. Like this. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was intense. It took me about a month, but um, we we filed her green card paperwork, and now we are waiting. And Ava Ava can't leave the U.S. until the green card is processed. So um, she's stuck here whether she <laughs> wants to be or not. Well, that pretty much uh, brings you guys up to the present day. That's our story. That's how we met. And uh, that's why we're here. But we're not quite done because many of you asked some more specific questions and we thought we would uh, answer them here. So why don't we jump right in? Michael Mora asks, Ava, what is the best thing that Harper can cook that you enjoy eating? On the flip side, Harper, what do you think is Ava's best Italian dish that she can make? In Italy, let's say that we are a big fan of chicken. Usually the chicken is something that you eat when you are all on a diet or you are sick. But here I need to say, I have to say that this guy made me discover that chicken can be also good. So I love his chicken. Every time that I eat chicken, he cooks the chicken. He's the chicken master. The, the best Italian dish that Ava makes, in my opinion, is pizza. I could eat Ava's pizza from dusk till dawn. We, uh, some of you might have seen it in one of our videos, but we happen to have, we live in this very old house, and we happen to have uh, an old uh, wood oven. It's meant to be a bread oven, but as soon as Ava got here, it became a pizza oven. But man, she can just crank out amazing pizzas out of that thing, so. Maple Chan asks, Ava, what do your tattoos say? Okay, here there is written uh, anche il mare, senza sogni e una distesa senza colori. Which means that uh, also the sea, if you don't have a dream in your life, uh, also the sea that for me is the most colorful space in all the world can be just gray if you don't have a dream with you. That tattoo made zero sense to me coming from Maine where the sea is extraordinarily gray until I visited her in Southern Italy and saw how absolutely colorful the sea is. I was like, oh, that makes more sense now. Danny asks, what is your favorite show to watch together? Master, Master Chef. Chef. <laughs> Pizza Panic One, nice name, asks, what is Ava's favorite American dish? Barbecue. With, with any, any doubt, barbecue, all my life. Hilary Garcia asks, Harper, do you speak Italian fluently? And if so, how did you learn? Uh, no, I do not speak Italian fluently. In fact, I barely speak Italian. No, I... Sto studiando. I'm studying. I'm trying, but... He is lying also because he can speak Italian, but most of all, every time that I speak Italian, he understands everything. I, I can understand Italian pretty well. It's harder for me to... to say what I want to say. It often takes me a while. I have to I have to think about it really hard. So it's, I'm not really at the point where I can communicate well with someone. You would think that with Ava being an Italian language teacher that my Italian would be really good, but that's unfortunately not the case. Okay, when I have my students, I'm very, very patient. But with him, every time that he didn't understand for me was, why you don't understand? It's so obvious, come on. Sometimes we play a game though, where you give me uh, sentences in English and I have to translate them. Give me one, give me one now. Today, finally, there is the sun. Uh, oggi, finalmente, c'è il sole. I told you, it's pretty good. I have to think about it. Anna asks, Harper, did you have any prejudices slash wrong ideas of Italy before meeting Ava? Uh, yeah, I guess I did. I, when I first went to Italy, you know, as an American, I think about Italian cuisine and I think about pasta and pizza. And while those things are certainly there in abundant measure, I was really surprised by the variety of food, the amount of seafood, particularly in the South, there was all kinds of weird stuff like like uh, sheep's brains and like squid ink pasta and all these things that would seem so unusual that when as an American when I think of like like it, Olive Garden variety Italian food it doesn't leap to mind. So I definitely was surprised by that aspect of Italy. I also thought that it was a stereotype that Italians say Mamma Mia. Uh, at least one of them does. PD2KC asks, what is your favorite movie ever? So once Upon a Time in America. Sergio Leone. With the music of Ennio Morricone. Rest in peace. My favorite movie of all time is King Kong. 
which I recently discovered was the very first movie I ever watched when I uncovered some old home movies. So that makes sense. South Aussie Garbo 2045 asks, if Ava had to eat only one Italian food for the rest of her life, what would it be? Pizza. <laughs> Astrolabla 3B or something like that. As the Come vi è venuta l'idea del canale? How did you think? Why did you think to open a YouTube channel? To start a YouTube channel? <laughs> okay, it started when uh, when I was in Italy for our wedding. Uh, the American side of my family and the Italian side of my family, we were all eating together and the conversation came up about spaghetti and meatballs and how Italians don't really eat spaghetti and meatballs. And Ava started explaining the rules of pasta and as she was talking I was sitting there thinking like she's an Italian language teacher and like she thinks about pasta sort of like she does language. There's like a grammar and there's rules and this goes with this and there are, you know, all the little things about it. And so uh, that's kind of when the idea of pasta grammar came about. Kaylin asks, Harper, if you could steal one thing from Italian culture and make it 100% American, what would it be? Same question goes for you, Ava. What would you steal from American culture and bring it to Italy? Okay, this is easy for me. Uh, the history. I like America. I like my country. I'm a patriotic soul. But being in a place where you're like walking through a city and you're on a sidewalk and you look down at your feet and you're like, oh, that's where Julius Caesar was assassinated. You can't describe the like chills in your body that you get from being in a place that is so ancient. And it's it's something that we just don't really have here in the new world nearly to the same extent uh and that's one thing that i that i really wish i could transport from italy we need some ancient ruins in america for me the thing that i like most here in america and that in my opinion make the strength of this great country is the diversity that you can find in all over the country they are all different but they are all together uh, and they bring their soul their food their culture their tradition it's amazing massimiliano crivellari ci chiede qual è il primo piatto che eva ha cucinato per harper e qual è se c'è stato il primo piatto che harper ha cucinato per eva is that what was the first dish that you cooked for me and what was the first dish that I cooked for you? Bravo! Bravo, that's a good student. The first dish that he cooked for me was uh, South Carolina barbecue. North Carolina barbecue. Well, come on, no, no, it's South Carolina, it's all the same. <laughs> the first dish that Ava cooked for me was gnocchi. Uh, but it was gnocchi in like a, a baked dish with cheese on top, right? It has a name after. What's it called? <laughs> gnocchi alla sorrentina. That. Francesco Bellringer asks, what kind of things do you guys eat for regular meals? For breakfast? I have the same thing every day for breakfast. I have a giant bowl of oatmeal with like walnuts and stuff. Super good. Ava barely eats anything for breakfast because breakfast is not a very big thing in Italy, is it? For breakfast, you should have uh, one glass of uh, almond milk, uh, my coffee, because I can't live without my coffee. Usually one rice cake with homemade jam. Lunch is usually pretty light for us. Um, uh, it could be kind of anything, but then dinner is really when Ava takes over and makes whatever she wants to, and I just pretty much eat it. <laughs> and usually I decide uh, in between uh, pasta, risotto, it can be chicken, uh, in this case he makes the chicken. <laughs> it can be like meat or fish, always with a ton of vegetables because we, we both love it. Wes Collins asks, what does Ava do to make her hair so magical? And on a follow-up note, I think we should answer the most asked question we get in our comments. Are you wearing a wig? No, no, no. These are my hair. <laughs> These are completely mine. Very real. 
You can like them or you don't like them, but they are mine, 100%. And what I do to my hair? Uh, nothing. I wash my hair um, in a normal way, dry my hair in a normal way, uh, nothing. And finally, Summer asks, why don't you kiss, like not making out, but just to peck on the lips, hug, lean, and do all the other stuff that other couples on YouTube do. Uh, we, ne we never put any thought into it. We just uh, didn't think it was very appropriate or anything. It never crossed our mind to. But here's a kiss for you. Well guys, thank you for watching. I, oh, I almost forgot. I actually have a little surprise for you. Oh. Hang on. No, I don't really like his surprise always. I thought we would end today with a slice of blueberry pie, just like the one we met over. Amore, grazie. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Nothing like Maine wild blueberries. This is one of the best American dessert. I love the blueberry pies. Ti amo. I love you. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was <laughs> interesting, at least a little bit to you. We'll be back with more videos soon, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, at Pasta Grammar. We also have started a recipe blog online, pastagrammar.com. We're still working on getting recipes up, but we'll have more soon. But if you want more recipes, head over there and check it out. See you next time. Ciao! Ciao.